Supporters of Zimbabwe's ruling party cheered the election results, giving them a majority in parliament. But opposition leaders are vowing to fight efforts by President Robert Mugabe to change the country's constitution. What will the results mean to his rule? We take your questions on this edition of Q&A. Hello and welcome. I'm Ralph Wenge, in for Riz Khan. We're joined here at the CNN Center by Patrick Musomi. He's a leading figure in the Zimbabwe People's Convention, a student-based group that backs the opposition movement for democratic change. In our talking points today, reaction to the results. What tone will the opposition be expected to take in Parliament? Are there areas where they can work with Mr. Mugabe's party? And the international response. Groups like the Commonwealth are pressing Harare to end the country's land crisis. Should the international community back off and let the matter be handled domestically for now? And Zimbabwe's future. How does this election affect its development as a democracy? Supporters of President Mugabe cheered the results. Of course, yeah, well, we've been having some elections sometime, but this one has been something else. I should say it had some few things here and there, which I think I, rock, I reckon with. It, yes. it is a challenge to ZANPF. The final tally gives the ruling ZANU-PF of President Mugabe 62 seats, the opposition movement for democratic change 57 seats, and the much smaller opposition ZANU-Indongo one seat. Mr. Mugabe personally appoints another 30 members of parliament. MDC leader Morgan Shangjirai, who lost his own contest for a seat in parliament, noted that President Mugabe failed to get the two-thirds majority needed for him to amend Zimbabwe's constitution unilaterally. Anybody who believes that uh, the future destiny of this country lies on Robert Mugabe must have his head examined. I think both ZANU-PF and those people that have been engaged in irregularities must realize that this is the end of Robert Mugabe. The sooner they start planning his retirement, the better. John G. Rai contends that his party would have won were it not for the campaign of violence against opposition supporters. At least 30 people died in political unrest and occupation of white-owned farms before the election. International monitors condemned the violence, which they acknowledged seriously curtailed the MDC's ability to campaign. Violence on that scale and intimidation of that nature have no place in a, an election campaign and uh, that must be corrected and the people who are involved in that must be persecuted and brought to court. Meanwhile, with two years left in his term, President Mugabe says he will not include any opposition members in his cabinet. We want to remind you that our internet chat room runs all throughout this program. We'll be checking in there in the program for your questions. You can get there via our website at cnn.com slash Q&A. And our guest, Patrick Musami, thanks for joining us. And are you satisfied with the results? Uh, well, Ralph, um, I should say that um, before I uh, delve into your question, I should um, comment on... Um, what Zimbabwe is like uh, at this stage. Zimbabwe is in an uh, economic, uh, social, and uh, political quammer, uh, as characterized by um, an unprecedented high level of uh, inflation, uh, which is stands at 72%, um, unemployment at 55%, the AIDS pan pandemic with one in four uh, uh, of every Zimbabwean uh, being afflicted by the virus, and uh, we, people are craving for a change. Do you think and that's why the MDC, which is only nine months old, why the MDC was able to make such a strong showing? Basically, that's the reason, uh, uh, because um, there's a high level of general discontentment in Zimbabwe. People want the uh, leadership of Robert Mugabe and ZANU-PF to go. Uh, this is um, an autocratic government which has been clinging to power for more than 20 years. And um, all what they've done is um, to destroy the country economically. The economy is bleeding. And um, they've actually uh, turned Zimbabwe into bankruptcy and uh, de facto one-party state. And the people are saying, no, uh, it's time to change. 
We have an email question for you now, and the question comes from Berlin, Germany. Is the MDC going to play its role as an opposition party, or will it simply try to satisfy its sponsors in Britain, the EU, and South Africa? Um, the MDC is going to play a very pivotal role in that um, it's going to uh, advocate for a change or for a redrafting of the Constitution, because this is uh, the starting point. Uh, the, the Dr. Langest House Constitution, which has kept Mugabe in power and ZANU-PF and their surrogates, has got to go. Uh, we have got to uh, have a regulatory document which is um, people-centered, where we are going to call all the stakeholders and ensure that um, we have got a, a sustainable democracy in Zimbabwe. But let, let's clarify one thing here, and I think this is important to remember. The MDC will not have any real power, correct? Yes, but for any um, constitutional changes or provisions to, to be effected, ZANU-PF would need a, a two-thirds majority in parliament, and that's not going to, to happen. Previously, we had a monolithic uh, parliament whereby bills were just uh, being um, passed in parliament and uh, ascended to by Robert Mugabe willy-nilly. And that is the reason why even our Bill of Rights, um, most of the provisions are uh, to ensure that um, the government gets away with it. Just a short time ago, President Mugabe went on radio and he urged reconciliation and he said, and these are his words, he urged unity across race, tribe, and ethnicity. Now this from the man who um, had attacked white uh, Zimbabweans, he criticized Britain heavily. Do you believe him? Robert Mugabe is an inveterate liar, and an authentic um, autocrat whom we are not going to listen to at this stage. Uh, him and his uh, geriatric leadership tired and useless as they are, they should just step down. We are not going to take any word from him. All what we need to have is to ensure that um, there are ample constitutional changes so that we can have uh, peace, our economy can be built up again you, and so forth. You call him a liar. Yes. And this tells me that you don't see any way in which the MDC and President Mugabe can work together. Definitely, and uh, there's no way at this stage uh, we can allow um, ourselves to be accommodated by Mugabe and ZANU-PF and their surrogates. All what we need is to have um, a revamping of um, the leadership as a whole to ensure that we, we put in place guys, uh, people who are people-centered, who are going to introduce proper policies, who are going to ensure that the economy grows restore investor confidence and so forth. All right, we're going to take a short break now. When we return, international response to the elections, what should be done about the accusations of vote rigging, of corruption, and all the other charges? Have your own questions ready, but first this programming note. The next edition of Insight will look into Zimbabwe's future. The program will examine the country's most influential figures in the run-up to the scheduled presidential election in 2002. That's Insight with Jonathan Mann. It comes up one half hour after this program. We'll be right back.